Welcome to part two of the Chelsea Watford Boxing Day preview. Uh, this is me picking my starting 11. Now, just to reiterate, this is not me predicting what Gus Hiddink is going to pick. This is my personal uh, selection. Selection. Uh, so, uh, as ever, in the comments, let me know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, and who your ideal 11 would be to face Watford. Right, let's get on with it. Number one in goal, got to be Courtois. Um, thanks very much, Begovic. I think he did a good job whilst Thibaut was injured. But I think Courtois gives the defenders in front of him a bit of confidence and he's a calming influence. So Thibaut gets the nod in number one. Um, right back, I'm going to go with Ivanovic. Um, you know, I think, as we all know, he's coming for some stick this season. But I think he played quite well against Sunderland. Uh, you know, he was getting down the right wing quite often, putting some of his crosses in. Again, like, his crossing... This season is nowhere near as good as it usually is, but hopefully, um, you know, maybe uh, Gus will work on that in the training ground with him at Cobham this week. And so hopefully we'll see uh, Branner flying down the wing and uh, get some good crosses in. So Branner's our right back. Uh, left back, I'm going to go with Aspilicueta, a.k.a. Dave. Uh, and centre backs, for me, they pick themselves Cahill and Terry. I know Zuma played last time out against... Uh, against Sunderland and don't get me wrong I love Zuma and he's definitely definitely the centre back for Chelsea Football Club in years to come however just now he's not quite the finished article and I really see this Watford game as a must must win game and so for that reason alone partnering John Terry has got to be Gary Cahill for me now as we move into midfield um, I'm going to mix things up a bit uh, as, you, as you know, as usual, we have midfielders, we'll have the two holding ones, usually Matic and Fabregas, then the three across the middle, then the one striker. As we've got a new manager, and as we've, you know, the old rule book's gone out the window, I'm going to slightly toy with our formation here. So again, in the comments, let us know what you think. So, as our sole holding midfielder in the old traditional number four role, I'm going to go for Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Um, now, Gus Hiddink, apparently, as part of his remit from Abramovich this season, or for the rest of this season, is to do his best to blood some of the youngsters. Now, Jose tried with um, Roftus, as I like to call him, uh, throughout the season, but it never really worked for him. I think, in total this season, uh, Ruben's only got about 66, 67 minutes under his belt. So, Hiddink has been charged with, um, you know, trying to up the numbers in terms of how much game time our youngsters get. So, why not? Let's start him at Watford as the, as the central holding midfielder, Ruben Loftus-Cheek. So moving into the middle, uh, uh, sorry, moving ahead of him, across the three across the middle of the park. On the right-hand side, we're going to be William. Um, as we all know, he's been our standout performer of the season. He works hard, he scores goals, he sets goals up. Uh, and to be honest, he's my player of the year by a country mile. So William down the right all day long. Down the left, might surprise a few of you, but I'm going to go with Pedro. I think he had a really, really good game um, against Sunderland uh, last week. And we haven't really seen enough of Pedro. I think Jose uh, tried him here, tried him there, but you know whether injuries or niggles or, or whatever was going on behind the scenes got in the way. Um, we never really saw the best out of Pedro, apart from on his debut. He gave us a flash of what he can do on his debut. And then I feel like we've had nothing since the debut. And then at the Sunderland game, we got another flash of what Pedro's all about. And when he, when he fancies it, this guy's mustard. So for me, I hope he can continue that form into the next game. So Pedro, down the left, you're on. The central midfielder, attacking-minded central midfielder, I'm going to go for Oscar. Uh, I thought he was absolutely sublime again against Sunderland this weekend. Everything good we did came through him. He always wanted the ball. I think he had about 108 touches in the 88 minutes or so he was on the pitch. And he really was our best player. As I've mentioned in previous videos, it does worry me slightly that Oscar sort of just turned up last weekend. Yeah, it makes me think, well, where the bloody hell were you? The previous three months when Jose was picking you and you were just anonymous. But, you know, we're not going to... We're not going to heap a load of negativity on, onto this. It's Christmas time. Let's keep it upbeat. And, uh, and Oscar, if you can play as you did last week, mate, against Sunderland, then you're the player I want in my team. So, Oscar, in that kind of attacking midfield in central role, you've got the nod. Now, up front, um, I'm going to go with Remy. Uh, centre forward, Remy. Costa... As I mentioned previously, Costa's not trying hard enough this season. We've given him chance after chance after chance. He's started more fights than he's had shots this season. So for me, 
Remy doesn't get enough games, but when he does come on, he looks sharp, he looks dangerous, and he doesn't want to get involved in all the other stuff. All he, this guy cares about is head down, getting in the box and seeing if he can score a goal. And for me, that's what I want out of my centre forwards, especially when you think out of Costa, Remy and Falco, between them this season, I think they've scored five Premier League goals, which is an absolute disgrace. So Costa is finding himself on the bench, and Remy is going to be our number nine centre forward. So that leaves one position floating about still. And it's going to be Hazard. Now, I know he's coming for a bit of stick from the Boo Boys. Uh, some of that is totally, um, is totally granted. But let's not forget, Hazard is probably our best player that we have in the squad, right? Um, he got a lot of grief, including from me. I was at the Leicester game when he sort of subbed himself. Uh, he got a lot of grief from the Chelsea uh, supporters for, for doing that. A lot of people, along with, you know, maybe Costa and Fabregas, slightly blamed Hazard for Jose's departure. But remember, he has played well for us for the two and a half, three years that we've had him. You know, he really has come on leaps and bounds. Last season, he was the best player in the league by a mile. And don't forget, he's always getting kicked. He's always getting fouled. And... Yes, he got kicked and he got fouled at the Leicester game. It was Jamie Vardy, actually, in case anyone's wondering who did it. Uh, so, Jamie, watch out. Uh, but, you know, Hazard does not normally get injured. Uh, if you take into account the amount of times he gets fouled to the amount of times he spends on the, you know, in the injury room, it's, it doesn't work out. So, I'm going to give him that. You know, he's had a bad hip. I've read in the papers today, the hip's sort of cleared up and he's looking fit to play against Watford. So, for me, Hazard's getting into the starting eleven. And I'm going to have him playing just off Remy. So not quite a, a, a centre-forward, centre-forward partnership as Watford will play with Dini and Agarlo, but Hazard just playing in that kind of in the whole role, hopefully very hard to pick up, hopefully Oscar feeding him little balls and then he can either go on little jinking runs himself or feed our boy Remy. So guys, there you have it. That is my team. On, you know, so there's no place for Costa, there's no place for Fabregas and there's no place for Matic. I think Matic really is another one that needs to pull his socks up. Uh, but hopefully Ruben Loftus-Cheek will have such a blinder um, playing in that defensive midfield role that, um, that maybe Matic might find it a little bit harder to get into the game uh, on the 28th against Man United. So guys, there you go. That's been my pick the team. Um, is it great? Is it terrible? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, I hope you've had a great Christmas and Happy New Year. And come on, you blues. They say football's a funny old game. And 2015, for any Chelsea fan, was a funny old year. So this is my top five highlights of 2015.